the people who study aging right now are roughly divided in two camps. We can call them pessimists and optimists. And the difference between these two groups is the following. One of them think uh, that aging is actually an active process, a program, which actually, whereas certain genes do certain things to make us age. Uh, the other group thinks that this is just a random process and we age because there is no reason for us to stay young. First, I probably should mention that, of course, uh, if there is a program in aging and there are genes which regulate this program, there should be easy ways to, to cut this program, to switch off the genes and to stop this forceful aging which is imposed on us. If there is no such program, if it's just uh, a random process, we can predict that it's much more difficult to, to deal with aging. We are products of evolution, so anything which happens in us should have some evolutionary explanation. Uh, so we know that many animals, almost any animal in, in, on Earth, uh, eventually ages, uh, with few exceptions though. Uh, so there should be some evolutionary reason for that. Uh, so one of the reasons which is given is that actually if we don't die, we overpopulate our ecological niche and we actually imped our progeny which cannot you know there's no space for it so um, indeed uh, we have examples when this probably happens for example salmon salmon is known to die within a very short period of time after spawning um, when it goes up the, the, the rivers and uh, this is an example of clearly uh, developed uh, program in aging the other uh, possibility is that um, there may be different uh, conditions in which an animal wor uh, lives. For example, conditions where it has lots of food uh, uh, and it has to grow and, and, uh, and give birth to and, 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 pr and produce progeny. But there may be other periods, for example, drought, uh, hunger, famine, where animal cannot uh, spend its resources on, on producing offsprings, but instead should uh, sort of cuddle up uh, and conserve resources to live through this hard period. And after this is over, it can again start to grow and, and, and produce offspring. So it may be that there is a switch which sort of puts an animal in this another state. And indeed, many animals have this kind of regulation. Uh, this includes, for example, nematodes, which are very uh, famous uh, subject of aging studies. Nematodes, uh, there are a certain uh, set of genes which uh, makes it uh, transfer into dormant stage, which is called uh, dower, uh, where, uh, which is actually designed for the nematode to live through harsh periods of time. And uh, of course, uh, or sure enough, uh, if you look at the genome of the nematode, there are lots of genes which you can actually manipulate with uh, uh, to make it live longer and shorter. Nematodes are unique in that by certain combination of gene tweeting, uh, twitching, you can um, increase its lifespan 10 times, which is very impressive. But we are not nematodes, we are humans, uh, and it would be nice to be able to figure out, do we expect any genes of this kind in us humans, and will we be able to um, uh, take advantage of these? What other reasons for aging could we think of? Um, so there's other camp, which, is, which I call pessimists. Uh, these people think that aging evolves for a different reason. And this reason is as follows. Uh, life is hard. We're always bombarded by different uh, unpleasant things. For example, uh, when we produce energy in our cells, we also produce lots of uh, radicals which damage cellular components. We are always attacked by bacteria, viruses, which uh, not only create acute disease, but they also leave uh, long-lasting damage in our tissues, as we now start to understand. UV, for example, UV light is something which we always are which was a problem for us. Um, and uh, we know that when people migrate uh, from uh, equatorial areas to, to, northern, to, to northern areas, they lose their black pigment, which apparently is a, is a, is a way of um, fending off UV. So we have all these factors which uh, we always are 
subject to, and we have to continuously stage repair. We have to repair damage done by viruses or bacteria. We need to uh, repair damage done by uh, oxidative radicals, uh, which we produce ourselves. We need to, uh, to repair our skin after UV exposure. So all our life is based on different types of repairs. Um, and if we don't repair, of course, we, damage will accumulate and we, eventually we will die. And this dying will probably look like aging because we'll see gradual deterioration in our tissues because of the of accumulation of different defects, whether it's uh, cellular damage or bacterial damage to, to organs or basically skin cancer. Why do we need to repair ourselves and how much do we need to repair ourselves? Um, animal in the wild, uh, the ultimate goal is to reproduce its genes. So what we need is to perhaps live till we produce our spring uh, and then we can die. But this is not uh, the whole story. Many animals actually have several sets of offspring. And the more sets of offspring you have, the higher um, selective advantage, advantage you have in the population. Uh, so, in principle, any animal sh wants to li live longer. It's very advantageous to live longer in a population. So, if uh, for some reason we get age, we age and die, that should be against this, uh, this strong selective pressure to live longer and have more offspring. But if we look at natural population of animals, very few of them are aged. Very few of them really old and disabled. Most of them die well before uh, this damage can overcome their bodies. So apparently what happens in, uh, in reality, in real populations, is that uh, limited to the time in which we can produce our offspring. And if, for example, an animal is eaten by predators or is killed by disease and epidemia, uh, there's no reason for us to repair our bodies, which would be dead anyways. So uh, the idea is that the uh, intensity of repair, which we, which we use in our, in our lives, it depends upon how long we can live in the wild. For example, large animals like elephants or, or, or whales are known to, 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 to age very slowly. This is because uh, they are they are not killed by any other uh, natural natural causes. There are a few factors which affect um, the damages uh, which uh, which which accumulate in our in our tissues with aging. So maybe uh, there actually some major factor which is the main and the most important. And if we somehow deal with that factor. Will it increase the the, the lifespan uh, for very uh, for, for significant uh, amount? Uh, most likely, this is not this is not the case, and the reason for that is as follows: um, Consider, for example, that uh, radical damage, which is our internal factor, is very strong and the most important factor of the damage which you have in our tissues. That means that next important factor will be free to evolve and to become more damaging, as long as it's comparably lower with the main one. So when we try to do something with the main factor, for example, we eat some pills against um, oxidative damage. Yes, we'll cut down oxidative damage. Well, very soon we'll see that the next important factor will pop up and will, 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 will be measurable. Uh, a good example for that is actually a comparison of mitochondrial and, and um, uh, nuclear DNA. We know that nuclear DNA mutations are important for aging, primarily because they cause cancer. So we, like 30% of people are dead because of cancer, because of mutations in nuclear DNA. Now if you look at mitochondrial DNA, it's uh, five orders of magnitude smaller than the nuclear DNA. So a priori, you would think that the number of mutations which accumulate in this small genome should be completely uh, incomparable with what you see in the nuclear genome. And this genome should be just uh, not relevant to any, any, anything uh, related to aging or physiology of the cells. But that's not the case. 
we actually see lots of damage <coughs> in aged tissues due to mitochondrial mutations. And the reason for that is that mitochondrial genome and the systems which maintain mitochondrial genome and decrease the number of mutations were free to evolve to very high levels of mutations, very uh, low level of uh, maintenance, because as long as you have very low number of the mutations, they're irrelevant for evolution. They do not interfere with our ability to, to produce offspring. So uh, in principle, aging as it evolves, uh, there should be a tendency for different factors, for different independent factors, to sort of equalize in their impact on, uh, on, on the aging process. So what, what are the, what are the uh, take home message for uh, the perspectives of um, extending lifespan? The reasons why we believe that uh, certain aging interventions will significantly in increase the lifespan of, uh, for example, human, is the um, experiments in model animals, for example, mice, which are, uh, if they're subject to regime called caloric restriction, where they just eat less than they want, uh, can live almost uh, very significantly longer lives. But again, if we look at that, at that from an evolutionary point of view, there may be reasons why uh, mice may want to live longer in the periods where there is not enough food. They may want to try to live over those harsh periods of time. But this is not true for humans. It's very unlikely that humans, which live much longer lives, uh, will get any advantage uh, from living like 10, 10 or 20 years more, because this is not the way to live through harsh periods of times. It's good when you're talking about one year, like in the mouse. So uh, from evolutionary point, we do not expect uh, that uh, there will be easy uh, ways to significantly adjust uh, human lifespan. But on the other hand, what we expect, that there will be many different problems which we'll need to fix to make pe uh, people live longer. And actually, this is what happens now um, in real time. In fact, uh, human longevity has been increasing for almost 150 years now, almost uh, linearly. Uh, we got one year per four years lived. Uh, so every four years, the life expectancy in the best countries in the world increase uh, by 25%. So uh, actually, this process is going, and maybe the reason why lifespan increases is because we're fixing different diseases which affect our lifespan. We decrease the mortality from cancer, decrease mortality from cardiovascular disease, and uh, that's why we live longer. Uh, but we can expect that as we live longer, we will get more and more problems. So uh, extending our lifespan will become increasingly more difficult. But hopefully our technological advances will allow us to keep the pace of 25% increase of lifespan uh, for quite a while.